call to order the Public Improvement Commission, Thursday, September 1st, 2016. Public hearing continued number one on a joint petition by Cronin Holdings LLC and the Boston Redevelopment Authority for the discontinuance of any and all rights to travel the public may have had within a portion of Seaport Boulevard, South Boston, located on its northeasterly side between B Street and Pier 4 Boulevard slash East Service Road, new business, uh, August 4th, 2016, public hearing August 18th, 2016, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Discontinuance Plan, Seaport Boulevard, South Boston, one sheet dated May 25th, 2016. Morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Commissioner, members of the board. Uh, John Polgini on behalf of Cronin Holdings. Um, we're here at this point to ask for a continuance, as you guys are well aware. Mr. Hesford is not present with us this morning, and um, if you remember from the previous um, meetings before you, uh, the traffic plan and the traffic flow is very much vital to what you guys have to make a decision based upon. So due to that, we would like his opportunity to weigh in on that. We did update some plans and have sent them over to him, but I don't know that he's had the opportunity to take a look at them. So based upon that, we would respectfully request a continuance. He has them in his possession, BTD? He does. Okay. What, um, what about the uh, issue with the, uh, the KV line, 115 KV line? So um, we have a representative from uh, Eversource with us today. He could speak to that better. But the, the building structure itself um, does not extend into the KV line. Here's the KV line. We're over here. So Eversource has established some sort of buffering between that and also with respect to any sort of cantilever. It has to be a certain height. We're well above the height, so there could be any sort of maintenance. No, that's good. I, I, that allows them to maintain it, but the, the issue still remains that in order for them to maintain it, they need a permit. Today, they need a permit from Boston Public Works Department and Boston Transportation. In the future, if we discontinue the property, they'll need a permit from the owner of the property. Good, good point, but we're not discontinuing that part of the parcel. Is there, you guys need no permanent easement in any portion of the discontinuance? It's Rick Chifoni from Eversource Electric. Um, we're working with the Cronin Group. The transmission line is outside of the, uh, the okay. discontinuance because they're only going partially into where Old, North, uh, no Old Northern Ave was. There is some distribution facilities in the to be discontinued property that we're working with the Cronin Group to either have it relocated or an easement granted. Uh, we've been working with them on a regular basis. And we have no issues with the discontinuance yeah. provided we just relocate the distribution lines. Okay, but to Steve's point, we cannot move forward on this action until either the line has been moved or the easement has been granted. Yeah, I'm glad that the, well, the big line is outside. Correct, That's yeah. good. That's the, the, the money line. <laughs> it's a, yeah, but, a big but, number line. Right? The other stuff, I mean, I just, you know, I'd like this to, to be resolved before we discontinue it, because if we discontinue it, then you don't have any options. And, you know, it'd be up to ever sourced you know, to, to make sure that you push this, uh, yeah, what the cloning group can discontinue it. Yeah, and, and Amy's right that we, we can't discontinue it because we, we gave rights to Eversource to be there. We can't take their rights away um, without some kind of an agreement. So it needs to made. be declared private, granted an easement, or moved before we go. That's right. And would an agreement to move it suffice for this board? Oh, absolutely. Okay. As long as the, it doesn't have to it's be agreement. Agreement. It's both parties. Yeah, as long as the both parties sign it, that's fine. Because I think that would be everybody's um, would be in everybody's best interest to actually move it rather than grant an easement. Sure. Yeah, and the source concur concurs with that. That's fine. You don't have to physically move it. You can have an agreement that says that you'll move it. <laughs> that's correct. All right. That would be good. Thank you, Commissioner Shea. Um, so Eddie has it in his possession. Will two weeks be enough time? Uh, we hope so. Should be. Time. Okay. Um, uh, I entertain a motion to uh, postpone uh, public hearing continued item number one until Thursday, September 15th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Public hearing continued item number two on a joint petition by Cronin Holdings LLC and the Boston Redevelopment Authority for the vertical discontinuance of a portion of Seaport Boulevard, South Boston, located on its northeasterly side between B Street and Pier 4 Boulevard slash East Service Road, vertically above the grade of the sidewalk, 
New business, August 4th, 2016. Public hearing, August 18th, 2016. As shown on a plan entitled, City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Vertical Discontinuance Plan, Seaport Boulevard, South Boston, one sheet dated May 25th, 2016. Uh, morning again. Good morning, Mr. Commissioner. Um, echo the same things we did before. It's all part of the same project. It's the same discontinuance area. So we would, again, with respect to this, res respectfully request a, uh, a continuance for two weeks. Understood. Um, I will entertain a motion to continue public hearing, continued item number two until Thursday, September 15th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Public hearing continued item number three on a joint petition by Northam Park Realty Trust and JMass2 LLC for the abandonment of any and all rights to travel the public may have had within a portion of Northam Park, private way open to public travel, Dorchester, from a point 60 feet northwest of Dorchester Avenue to its northwesterly terminus at the MBTA red line. New business, August 4th, 2016. Public hearing, August 18, 2016. As shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Abandonment Plan, Northam Park, a private way open to public travel, Dorchester, one sheet dated August 1st, 2016. Morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission. Uh, my name is Kevin Cloutier from the Cloutier Law Firm We're in West Roxbury. I represent Stephen Connolly, the, the developer. Uh, the primary issue with this matter is we're seeking to abandon a paper street which runs through the uh, lot where we're proposing an 18 unit multifamily. Uh, the Commission addressed the issue of um, fire access in and out. What I'd be requesting today is to continue this hearing out till October 6th so that we can get the plans released from BRA, which we're close to doing, and allow inspectional services, including fire, to do their full review. So when we come back, hopefully we'll have all of those matters addressed uh, for the Commission's consideration. Great. Uh, okay. Having said that, I will entertain a motion to continue public hearing, uh, continued item number three, until Thursday, October 6th. Second. First. So moved. All in favor? <laughs> so moved. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cloutier. Thank you. Six. Yeah. Ten, six, sixteen. Uh, public hearing item number one on a petition by Podium Owner LP for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Causeway Street, Boston proper, located on its northwesterly side, from Haverhill Street slash Legends Way to a point approximately 100 feet southwesterly of Friend Street. New business, August 18, 2016 as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Pedestrian Easement Plan, 50-150 Causeway Street, Boston, one sheet dated August 9th, 2016. Morning. Good morning. Uh, Kevin Sheehan on behalf of the developer of this project, which is a joint venture between Boston Properties and uh, Delaware North. Um, this project is on the site of the uh, old Boston Garden and is, is part of the um, original master plan that was conceived with the um, construction of the new uh, TD Garden uh, North Station, um, which happened um, in, uh, in the 90s. The old, old uh, Boston Garden was, was demolished thereafter and um, since that time was, was used as a, as a player parking lot on, on Causeway Street. Um, is now uh, part of this uh, redevelopment into a major mixed-use project of uh, up to 1.8 million square feet, including uh, retail, office, uh, residential, and hotel uses, um, and an expansion of the uh, parking, uh, uh, below-grade parking as well. Um, the, uh, as, this, uh, as I said, was uh, subject of the uh, original master plan. Uh, associated with the project has been through uh, extensive review um, with, with the uh, BRA and the other city agencies. Um, the uh, design was uh, approved through the uh, BCDC process and um, in, uh, the project also includes uh, multiple public benefits including the provision of a grocery store space to this to this neighborhood um, as well as a, a new center entrance from Causeway Street um, which you can see on this next rendering, um, into uh, North Station, 
um, as well as a connection between the commuter station and uh, the subway station, a below grade connection um, between the two uh, stations, as well as the uh, sidewalk improvements, which we are here to talk about today. Um, we, the sidewalks are, um, have been coordinated with the Connect Historic Boston project, um, uh, which uh, was approved um, last, uh, last year, two years ago. Um, and so we're executing our plan um, in conjunction um, with that approval. Uh, and that's what we're here to present today. Good morning, members of the commission. I'm Howard Mosier with DHB. Our first uh, request for approval is for a pedestrian easement, 2,296 square feet. This pedestrian easement will allow for the construction of a nine foot, three inch wide unobstructed concrete walkway for pedestrians. The proposed overhang that's on this easement plan, I mean the uh, pedestrian plan, uh, are they on the specific repair plan also? The, the width? You have, you have two proposed overhangs. Uh, uh, are they on the specific repair plan also? Yes, they're shown in the dashboard. Okay, thank you. Any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition of the toad uh, podium owner LP for the acceptance of pedestrian easement adjacent to Causeway Street. Uh, all in short, the is entitled to the Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division. Pedestrian easement plan 50 to 150 Causeway Street, Boston, one sheet dated August 9, 2016. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Public hearing item number two on a petition by Podium Developer LLC for the making of specific repairs within Causeway Street, Boston proper, located on its northwesterly side from Haverhill Street slash Legends Way to a point approximately 100 feet southwesterly of Friends Street, consisting of curb realignment, roadway, sidewalk, and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavement street lights, street furniture, landscaping, traffic signal infrastructure, and groundwater recharge infrastructure. New business, August 18th, 2016, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, 50-150 Causeway Street, Boston proper, three sheets dated August 10th, 2016. Good morning, members of the commission. Same team, Howard Mosher from DHB. It was a previous project. Two weeks ago, we presented a specific repair plan that included cement concrete sidewalks, permeable pavers, planters, benches, bollards, bike racks, trash receptacles, pavement markings, pedestrian lighting, and stormwater injection wells. All shown on the plan as presented last week. There were um, a couple minor formatting comments we, we, uh, received by the public commission staff which were made, otherwise the general intent of the plans remains the same. Just a point of clarification, your main entrance of Champions Road that comes to Canal Street, so if I'm going for a basketball game or a hockey game, I'll be coming out of that entrance, right? I mean, yes. that's going to be a main focal entrance. Yes. If I'm coming from the commuter trains from parts north through north station, am I going to come out from the same area or is there another exit? Which will be the primary exit if I'm coming on a train, gets off at north station and I want to walk towards State Street? This would be the primary exit. Okay. There are two um, existing um, exits or actually three existing exits from north station which will remain. But as they are today, main. but this will provide the, the main entrance toward the sort of city center. So you're creating a lot of excitement there. It looks fantastic, creating a sense of a new entrance, and that entrance lines up with Canal Street. So I think it is natural that Canal Street also matches up in its look to complement the wonderful work which you all are doing. So hopefully we can continue to explore how Canal Street also looks so when all of the ants people come out from here and then sort of come in droves from your location to the downtown. You will continue to, I suppose, will work with us to see how that corridor will look. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the uh, proposed overhang that I just mentioned on the um, item before, uh, you've shown it. Uh, 
dashed line on this plan. Now, on the corner of uh, Legend Way and Causeway? Yeah, right there. What, what, is, the, what is the overhang? It, it's basically a canopy uh, so that where is comes out over to here, to here, and out over. We don't see, I don't see any plants on the canopy. I don't see any plants on the canopy. The okay. canopy is on private property. It doesn't extend over the property line. It, so the limits of the canopy are probably a foot behind the property line. They extend over the pedestrian easement. Hence, the pedestrian easement is limited to a height of 10 feet above grade. Right. So that helps with the platform. Le Legends Way, is that, is, that a, is that private? Legends Way, yes. Yeah, that's not a street. Okay. All right. Thank you. Can you I, still, I still think, I mean, we, we, we obviously did speci uh, specific repair plans for Legend Way, I'm sure, for aligning grade. Because it's kind into uh, Causeway Street. I mean, we it's, still should. It's just, it's not a street. It's, it's a plaza. But there's still pedestrian easement going down Legend, Legend Way for the for the public. I not, on, not on Legend's Way, right? I mean, that's pure right. private property. If I slip and fall, it is. Yeah. There's so no, there's no there's no public rights imposed by us over Legend's Way. At all. At all. He's definitely this. Uh, Street name sign, anything? Uh, none? Not from the transportation department. You. <laughs> no, sorry, Miss Cardi. So, so um, um, it, it'll it'll be signed, but this is not going to be a street sign from BTD saying that this is Legends Way. I'm sure they will have their own signage. Identification yes. purposes for. All right. So basically. this is a highly traveled public area. All right. Uh, what's the what's the height of the how much on Legends Way, way yeah. minimum 14, closer to 16. All right. The, uh, it's a major loading access. All right. What about has MBTA taken a look at it and there it's been approved? Yeah, there's been extensive coordination with MBTA, particularly since the head house is being yeah. removed and the tunnel extended. So there's there's been extensive coordination with MBTA on access through and around the property above their their holdings and things like that. All right. And has transportation looked at this the plan, this plan and approved it? Could you want to just email me the, uh, the specific repair plans, please? Absolutely. Document signed by Amy. Yes. Chunk, yeah. All right. Uh, any members of the audience have any questions or comments at this time? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by Podium Develop LLC, Developer LLC for making specific repairs within Causeway Street in Boston proper. Described and read at the record by the chair. Shown on the set of plans the title City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, specific repair plan, 50 to 150 Causeway Street in Boston proper. Plans are dated August 10th, 2016. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. You Public hearing item number three on a petition by X Tenant Systems for a granite location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit within the following public ways in Boston proper. New business, August 16, 2016. Berkeley Street, north of Public Alley 420, at Public Alley 437, south of Marlboro Street. Clarendon Street, between Beacon Street and Public Alley 420, north of Public Alley 436, at Public Alley 424, south of Newbury Street. Exeter Street, at Public Alley 426, north of Boylston Street. Hereford Street, at Beacon Street, north of Public Alley 430, south of Public Alley 443. Gloucester Street, south of Public Alley 428, between Boylston Street and Public Alley 442. Fairfield Street, north of Public Alley 432, at Newbury Street, north of Public Alley 416, north of Public Alley 427. Dartmouth Street, at Public Alley 435, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, Extended Systems, Back Bay Expansion, Proposed Conduit Installation, Six Sheets, dated July 2016. 
Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. For the record, Ricardo Souza from Prince of El Tai. Also with me today is John Morrison from UC Synergetic and Paul Thurston, who's a project manager for Extinet Systems, the petitioner. Um, and Mr. Chairman, um, the nature of this petition is an expansion of our existing wireless DAS network here in the city. And what we are proposing is um, the addition of 19 um, wireless DAS nodes in the BBAC jurisdiction. We currently have 18 in that same jurisdiction. These are all replacement streetlights, um, consistent with the design that's been approved by this commission in the past in the sense that we are utilizing the base design and the replacement streetlight. In addition to that, we've proposed these and met with not only NAB, but also the BBAC, uh, Back Bay Architectural Commission, and we received a certificate of appropriateness from the BBAC. So we've done our community outreach. Um, and uh, we think this is a good continuing effort of our franchise rights under the City of Boston franchise agreement that we have. We're happy to answer any questions that you may have. So here you say you had 18 and they're adding 19. Is that We're correct? adding 19, that's correct. And I'm not sure if this is appropriate time, Mr. Chairman, but we also submitted a, a map in response to some of the questions that you had, just generally regarding the activity of Extinet in the city. Um, existing, approved, proposed. Um, I believe that you should have a handout of the map itself that shows where our, all, all of our um, approved, existing, and uh, other streetlights are in the city. AB, do we have a composite map that shows the new type of, you know, the, the switch the streetlights? Yep. Various entities might be owning street lights that are now telecommunication modules. Do you mean do we have all of the carriers like, on one map? That way, within this area, yep. how many people have come down and how many poles have gone up? Do we have a composite map? We do not. I but believe we have that do it is attempting to compile that map. That's to right. do it. They're doing it. Yeah, we have provided uh, KMZ files that show okay. all of our existing locations okay. and CAD plans as well. Just um, having an ongoing concern about the infrastructure change of how it will all look with it as a common standard to how the infrastructure looks, plus the course. continuing cutting because I've noticed some of your cuts are not the micro trends you are doing Tra the full conduit. Traditional cuts, yeah. Right. You know, what we're trying to do is we're, uh, as you can see uh, with many of our petitions, and if you look at our total activity, um, the traditional uh, trenches are 4,409 feet for all of our projects, and micro trench is 6,275. And so micro trenching actually exceeds the traditional trenching that we've done. And that's been um, you know, a progression throughout the hearings that we've had with this commission. I appreciate that. Of course. Yeah. But for, for back, this uh, petition here, they're for the uh, uh, manual to, to street light dig, uh, digs. These are, these are traditional. For this particular 19, these are traditional. These are fairly sh short in length. None of them are longer than 102. 102 is the longest. So and they're all from the main road to the, to the street light? That's road. correct. That's correct. Can I ask a hypothetical question? Of course. Uh, take, for example, uh, BBX 045, which runs from Public Alley 443 to the pole at, uh, at the corner of Boylston. Right? If that pole at Boylston is um, currently being fed through an overhead, right? What, what, what does Extinet do? Does it, does it I'm, I'm assuming work has to be done to fix the conduit because the, the power is running to or from that light pole from another one. Is, is, the, is the objective to replace that pole and fix the conduit or just to put the pole in and so I'm going to defer to Paul yeah. Thurston on that um, since he's the project Just a manager. Just hypothetical situation. Right. So, uh, and it's very hypothetical because yeah. there's a lot of different answers depending on where the feed is coming from. Right. Um, if that, that pole may be getting fed from the alternate pole, where we would bring a new feed to that pole and disconnect that aerial wire. Okay. We work uh, closely with the street okay. light department on that, all aerial wire feeds to these street lights. Right. So it depends if the power is coming to or from that pole. Exactly. Great. All right. But code enforcement, I mean, not code enforcement, it's student move-in day. Um, street lighting is, 
involved in the process? Any, anytime we, there's an overhead involved? Okay, thank you. And just, just for the record, there is a city shadow with all these tickets. Yes, there are on the plans. Thank you, Commissioner Moshe. Okay. Chung? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Chung Liu. I'm the counsel for this board. And I just want to clarify a couple points uh, mentioned in the new business for XNet and uh, is about micro crunching. And uh, I was told that there's, um, we require, uh, we require uh, convert from, uh, from traditional VA to micro crunching. Uh, if I say that to correctly, uh, there's no requirement uh, or 125 feet, you know, you have to do uh, micro trenching or, I mean, from micro trenching to traditional. It's a case by case to basis, neighborhood uh, by neighborhood to basis. Uh, if we apply, if we require uh, one provider to do that, it's a application across the board, uh, not just for XNet or from, I mean, it's a is applied to XNet, to Front Castle, to anyone else. I just want to clarify about that. Thank you, Chung. Any members of the audience have any questions or comments at this time? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by XNet Systems for grants of location within the company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit in a number of streets in the back bay described and read and correct by the chair, and shown on the set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Land Location Plan for Extant Systems in the Back Bay Expansion, for six sheets of data July 2016. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Public hearing item number four, on a petition by Extant Systems for a grant allocation to install telecommunication infrastructure on replacement city streetlight poles within the following public ways in Boston proper. New business, August 18, 2016. Berkeley Street, north of Public Alley 420, south of Public Alley 437, and south of Marlborough Street. Clarendon Street, between Beacon Street and Public Alley 420, north of Public Alley 436, south of Public Alley 424, and south of Newbury Street. Exeter Street, south of Public Alley 426, north of Boylston Street. Hereford Street, south of Beacon Street, north of Public Alley 430, between Boylston Street and Public Alley 443. Gloucester Street, south of Public Alley 428, between Boylston Street and Public Alley 442. Fairfield Street, north of Public Alley 432, south of Newbury Street, north of Public Alley 416, north of Public Alley 427. Dartmouth Street, north of Public Alley 435, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, Extant Systems, Back Bay Expansion, Proposed Streetlight Nodes, 20 Sheets, dated July 2016. Good morning, morning again. again, Mr. Chairman. Uh, once again, uh, for the record, the same team on behalf of Extant Systems, the petitioner, and these are the concurrent DIG uh, petitions associated with the 19 new replacement streetlight nodes that we're proposing in the Back Bay Architectural Commission. And um, these digs do involve the sh city shadow. These, and they're the other way around. These are the poles. Yeah, first one was the dig, oh, these I, are the poles. I apologize. Yeah. 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 Sorry. <laughs> I didn't these have the, the petition in these front of me. Dig. And so th these petitions will continue to be um, the same design as we have utilized in the past, uh, whereby we are utilizing in this petition just Boston streetlights. We are, these are all replacement poles. They are consistent with the same design that's been approved in the past, utilizing the base cabinet in each of the 19, um, so that our radio cabinets are inside of that base cabinet. And the design has also been approved by the BBAC and NAB, and we have a certificate of appropriateness for this design. I just had a question about where does that, you, you, a certain part of the city has been franchised to you, I guess we'd call it, or something else maybe. Uh, Yo, you so, can explain that better than I can. I sure can. So the franchise agreement allows us to go in uh, any parts of the city. Okay. Um, so we just happen to be focused. If you look at our map and where our nodes are, we happen to be focused in sort of, um, I would say, uh, the uh, downtown area, North End, Beacon Hill, Back Bay, Fenway. That seems to be our area. And if you look at some of the other providers, they are, um, they are focused on areas outside of these core areas. And so the carriers, I think, uh, informally cover different so parts so of the this city. So this is going to be VR area? 
It, ha it has been, yes. This is where our customers have asked us to focus our efforts. Okay. Yeah. Are, there, uh, are, there, are the providers providing similar service within this area, to the best so, of your knowledge? Um, so there is, um, I represented a uh, petitioner that came before this commission, uh, ATC Outdoor DAS, which is American Tower, which um, is close to this area. It was all along um, Newbury Street and Boylston Street, but not as far into the BBAC and not in the other areas, areas that we are covered. In addition to that, they had a different technology. They didn't have a full DAS system. They had a wireless uh, Wi-Fi DAS, um, and I, I don't believe there are developing any new nodes, uh, and, and they haven't been at least in the last two or three years. But, but the franchise agreement doesn't limit you to this it's a, area. That's right, Mr. Moshe. It does not limit us to this area. Uh, and I or think that's else. that's right. And I think that's why it's helpful for you to create the, key, the, the comprehensive KMC that you're developing. What happens to the other parts of the city, you know, High Park and Mattapan? And, yeah, I believe, those, I believe those are being developed. I think it's an incremental process. Okay. Yeah. I imagine they all have the same provider in them. Their provider is requesting that this they each do yeah. a neighbor. Okay, I just you know if, if that were this end. Yeah, it's all, it's all driven by. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Go, go, take everybody. <laughs> someday I'd like to talk with someone that knows a lot more about it than I do. They can explain it to me. But and then I you can explain it. I don't want to sit. I don't want to sit here until lunchtime. <laughs> exactly. Uh, do any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve, approve the petition of uh, Exonet Systems for the grant location to install telecommunication infrastructure on replacement street light poles within the following streets, Berkeley Street, Clarendon Street, Exeter Street, Hereford Street, Gloucester Street, Fairfield Street, uh, and Dobbin Street, all read into the record by the chair and shown on plans entitled City of Boston. Public Works Department Engineering Division, Grant Location Plan, plan Exonet Systems Back Bay Expansion, Proposed Street Nodes, 20 Sheets, dated July 2016. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Commissioner. Public hearing item number five, on a petition by the Crown Castle NG East LLC for a grant location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit at two locations within Commonwealth Avenue, Boston proper, located at Carlton Street at the town of Brookline boundary and east of address 855. New business, August 18, 2016, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department. Engineering Division, Grand Location Plan, Crown Castle, Roxbury District 10, Carlton Street, Commonwealth Avenue, one sheet dated August 2016. Morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Kosti Ivanovich. I'm the Government Relations Manager for Crown Castle. With me this morning is Rich Shepard, Project Manager, Joanna Stowell, our uh, engineer from VHB, and Catherine, Kathleen Sarnakiara, who is a Government Relations Specialist with Crown Castle. We're here this morning. Uh, the first item is our two additional uh, conduits that will support our network in the Commonwealth Avenue area, also uh, supporting Boston students at Boston University. The, uh, one, one trench is conventional and the other trench is a micro trench. Which is the micro trench, the longer one on Commonwealth Avenue? Uh, this one here. That's the micro trench, yes. Yeah. The limits of that is that north of the over the bridge, the BU bridge. No, it's not. It doesn't go over the bridge. So which part is this? Is this between the bridge and Kenmore Square? Uh, the bridge is on, on this side. So okay. This this location is uh, right at the bridge. So that is south of the bridge. Correct. So uh, west. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Okay. And this work will be coordinated with the department. Uh, Mass UT, of course. Because they have a construction project that's coming up. So, so the, the, the plans that you have, the, uh, everything are, are, the, are the same plans they have? The underground utilities that. Yes. So you use their up to date plans? Yes. They got a lot of they got a lot of stuff moving around everywhere, and you know, there's a lot of new stuff in the ground. I just want to make sure that you know. Understood. Mm -hmm. and, and they will they will be required. I mean, we're going to 
they require that our plans get fully reviewed so that we can make sure that this coordinated effort. Is Thank you. What's the other? What's the smaller dig? How long is that? That one is uh, 178 feet because of uh, the location and uh, direction. It's, uh, it's be very challenging to do a uh, micro trench because of that long corner. We have to make. You can only cut straight lines. So. Uh, I kind of looked at that with a little skepticism. Is it that, that you could dig around a uh, yeah. you could corner, in, install something in a, like a almost a, a semicircle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's doable. It's, it's definitely doable with, with conventional trenching or uh, micro trenching. It would be very, very difficult. So the plan is to get in before the mass start project. In coordination with. Okay. I don't think we're gonna. I mean, it, it, it's difficult to, to say the timing at this point, but I mean, it really will depend on their acceptance of our plans. Okay. Yeah. Any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the petition by Crown Castle, NGV LLC for grant of location blue company status and no participants to install blue type communication conduit at two locations within Commonwealth Avenue, Boston proper, located at Calvin Street and east of address 855, as shown on the plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division. Make the location plan for Crown Castle, Broxby District 10, Calvin Street, Common Avenue. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Public hearing item number six on a petition by the Crown Castle NG East LLC for a grant of location to install new telecommunication infrastructure on two replacement city streetlight poles within Commonwealth Avenue, Boston proper, located at Carlton Street at the town of Brookline Boundary and east of address number 855. New business, August 18, 2016, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant a Location Plan, Roxbury, District 10, DAS nodes on PWD street lighting structures, Carlton Street, Commonwealth Avenue, one sheet dated August 2016. Morning again, Costa. Good morning again. Uh, for the record, Costa Ivanovich with Crown Castle. This item covers two nodes that will be the final two in our Commonwealth Avenue project. Uh, one, uh, both of them are the pendant style street lights that are on, uh, with equipment mounted in the base as, as we have submitted and uh, gotten approval for in the past. I think Power's gonna have you repeat final two on ComAv project. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Right? Yeah, this time. Yes. Pastor, <laughs> just. When you replace poles, can you walk me through exactly how that poles get replaced? So today I have a city-owned streetlight pole, mm -hmm. then something happens, time passes by, and one of your poles come up. But in between, do, is there a possibility of me seeing our old streetlight pole and your pole? And if so, how long do they stay there? The overlap is uh, so that we don't take the old pole out of service so it still provides the light. We leave it until we get the electrical inspection completed on the new pole. By uh, who? City of Boston Fire Inspector. And then Eversource oh, has no, to no. City of Boston's Fire Inspector, not the City of Boston Streetlight team members. Uh, the two, two different families. Correct. Yeah. We've actually done, the inspections <laughs> are performed by the wire inspector. It's a new service, so. That any time there's a service from, from the company, So do you have a time standard for the work to be done, recognizing that we all try to get things done as soon as possible? Mm -hmm. Who keeps track of whether something has fallen through the cracks or whether there are two lights up there for better lighting purposes? But then it doesn't, we don't want a double pole situation. You heard that story. So what are your standards? Standards are it typically takes two weeks for the wire once the permit is called in, and uh, Eversource is, uh, uh, typically turns the uh, service connections around in 72 hours. So at that point, um, I'd estimate the double pole would last uh, probably two or three weeks. Is there someone in your family that keeps on top of the situation? Absolutely. I mean, our, our, our general contractors are incentivized to finish the job because that's when they're going to get paid. 
and part of the job is removing the old pole. So that's one set, and we're also, we, we, we're out on, on site on these um, on a consistent basis, so that once the work is complete, we take the old pole down. So if we see any, we should bring them to your attention? Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition of Crown Cats and Lenny East LLC for the grant allocation to install new telecommunication infrastructure on two replacement street like city light poles on Car Map as rented directed by the chair, Charles Plants Town, City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant Allocation Plan, Roxbury District, 10 Des Roads uh, on, on Public Works Department Street Light Constructions. August 2016. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Public hearing item number seven on a petition by Crown Castle NG East LLC for a grant allocation with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit within Northern Avenue, South Boston, located southeast of Fanpair Boulevard. New business, August 18, 2016, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant Allocation Plan, Crown Castle, South Boston Network Expansion, two sheets dated August 2016. Good morning, Good morning. again. Uh, this is the, uh, one, one of the final uh, nodes in the South Boston Network. And, uh, we'll, we can refer to this one as number 184 out of 188. Uh, that will be the total of our applications in 2016. This is a uh, conventional trench. Yeah, so I can speak to that. Um, we had originally proposed this as a micro trench and then worked with a coordinating, we had a coordination meeting with WS Development um, that is you know, working in that area. And they're reclaimed, they're planning a full reclaim of that street, so the micro trench option would not be uh, viable because we can't maintain depth. Can you amplify it? When you say they, sorry, when you say they are going to do a full depth reconstruction, you mean who? WS? Uh, well, they're they're in uh, coordinated effort with their developer. To Amy, sorry, ancillary we ancillary thought back once all the roof buildings come up in the South Boston area, who is getting tagged with rebuilding rebuilding the streets? Uh, if we don't know, then we need to uh, work on it because right now I don't think it is. It depends on the street, a variety of people in a variety of different places. Since that is not a viable option, we don't want any contractors doing it. There needs to be a central body or someone that's going to take care of these streets because everyone trying to get their utility connections and on building constructions has torn our streets on. Yeah. So someone has to step up to the plate. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by Crown Castle NG East LLC for grant of location, <coughs> company status, and no participants to install the telecommunication conduit on Northern Ave and South Boston, located in southeast of Van Pier Boulevard. Shown in the set of plans entitled City, City of Boston Public Works Department. Engineering Division, Rental Location Plan, Crown Castle, South Boston Network Expansion. Sheets are dated August 2016. Sir. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Public hearing item number eight on a petition by the Crown Castle NG East LLC for a grant of location to install new telecommunication infrastructure on a replacement city streetlight pole within Northern Avenue, South Boston, located on its northeasterly side Southeast of Fanpair Boulevard, new business, August 18, 2016, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, South Boston, DAS nodes on PWD street lighting structures, Northern Avenue, one sheet, dated August 2016. Good once again, uh, Costa Ivanovich for Crown Castle. This is the, the pole that will accompany the, the conduit that we just spoke of. It's going to be a double fort point style fixture with equipment in the base. Uh, 
the street lighting department has given approval for the design, but we're still waiting for the components to arrive so we can assemble the prototype and make sure that the uh, that, that we have the satisfaction of, of the street lighting director. Is this the first double Acorn four point? No. No. We, we've done these before. Okay. Double, double okay. four point nautical style. Okay. Is there a current street light at that corner? I don't recall seeing one, or is this a new one? This is there's a request. Obviously, in communication with Mr. Yetman and Mr. Sullivan at Street Lighting and just awaiting approval? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll uh, entertain a motion contingent on Mr. Yetman and Mr. Sullivan's approval of this design. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, petition of Crown Castle NG East LLC for the grant location to install a new commuter tel telecommunication infrastructure on a replacement street light pole within Northern Ave. All is shown on Plant Town City Bus Public Works Department. Grant location, uh, Plant South Boston, uh, DAS notes on Public Works Street Lights. State one sheet dated August 20th um, with the uh, <coughs> street lighting from Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Public hearing item number nine on a petition by the City of Boston Transportation Department for the making of specific repairs within the following intersections consisting of curb realignment, roadway, sidewalk, and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated traffic signal infrastructure, August 18th, 2016. Washington Street at Waltham Street, Boston Proper, Pleasant Street, Stoughton Street, Thornley Street, Whitby Terrace, Dorchester, Cummins Highway, Rockdale Street, Rexford Street, Dorchester, Bennington Street, Marion Street, London Street, East Boston, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan, Waltham Street at Washington Street, Pleasant Street at Stoughton Street, Cummins Highway at Rockdale Street, Bennington Street at London and Marion Street, four sheets dated July 26, 2016. Good morning. Good morning, <coughs> Chairman. Good morning, uh, members of the Commission. Um, my name is Jim Gillooly. I'm with the Boston Transportation Department, and we were here two weeks ago to present under new business um, some uh, good progress uh, that we've made in getting some upgrades to signals around the city and some actual new installations. We currently are positioned to utilize 3.5 million in federal and state aid to upgrade and uh, newly install signals at a total of nine intersections, four of which involve uh, curb relocations. And so we're here today for purposes of seeking your approval for the designs that we've come up with for those four intersections as were noted in the, um, in the actual request. Um, I, I have with me here today Don Burgess from the Transportation Department's <coughs> Engineering Group, uh, Mark Ravalisi and Dan Nelson are both here as our uh, consultant from Howard Stein Hudson. Mm -hmm. And I would uh, ask at this point for Mark Ravalisi to present the four plans and show you specifically the, the curb relocations that we're looking for your approval on. Okay, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Okay, at Waltham Street and Washington Street, uh, we're adding traffic signals that are not there today, uh, adding a crosswalk on the easterly intersection. Uh, currently, it's a three-leg cross. It'll become a four-leg crossing. And we are adding uh, bump outs to, de to um, decrease the pedestrian distance, uh, crossing distance and crossing time. They're all brick sidewalks. They're going to be replaced with uh, wire cut brick and at the request of the Landmarks Commission and coordinated with the Mayor's uh, Commission for Persons with Disabilities, the, um, the ramps will be cement concrete with a brick level landing. Do you have any questions on this intersection? The bump house on, um, on uh, Waltham Street. Uh, have they made improvements by uh, Public Works Department? Yeah, quite a lot. Yes, they have. Yes. We reviewed all of these, and uh, I just want to make sure that uh, 
and, and, and we made comments. The comments were addressed. We sent another letter yesterday with a couple of minor comments. They're not going to hold up anything. We had specifically requested, Jim, that the, uh, the contract to set up a pre-con with our construction division. We'd like to have people out there because there's a lot of relocation of catch basins, and we'd like to keep tabs on all of that. But so it's in the contract documents the coordination with Boston Water and Sewer is required, and it will be a mass dot construction project. So they'll so they'll be hosting the precon. Oh yeah, and you'll I be. Mean, I'll make sure you get an invite. Well, yeah, but the, the we specifically because there's so much relocation of our facilities, it's typical for us to require that the contractor I mean, have a precon with us. Got it. It's a shop meeting, <laughs> and and then he submits a shop drawings, and then we're on the same page. We know where they're going, and that way we're able to make sure that. Where everything goes, where we take a good look at it. It's real important here because um, when they did the um, original reconstruction of Washington Street uh, years ago, there was some drainage. Um, some of the drainage patterns were, were moved, and the contractor did not uh, construct them correctly. And if you walk around there after a rainstorm, there's a lot of ponding uh, on some of these intersections. Because the contract, like, because the contractor didn't follow the specific, you know, uh, uh, contours of those intersections, uh, some of it's been fixed till then. But we just want to make sure that and I think these plans are going to help. Yep. So we just want to make sure that you know, that would be helpful to us. Dan, do we have a specific reference to have a Boston Water and Sewer Creek one meeting in the contract documents? No, we'll we, we can just add yeah, it. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll add it in. We sent it. We sent the letter over to you, so you'll have it in writing. From us. We sent it over yesterday. Do you mean this is part of the TIP project, right? Correct. So, since uh, Don, will you be the liaison for the resident engineer from BDD? Yes. Okay. Don, just make sure because other TIP projects, some of our public works will be doing the liaison. <coughs> things. Since this is on traffic signal stuff, you will need to make sure that whoever the RE that mass DOD tags, that you make sure that Steve's stuff is looked after. Okay, Want to the next one? So. Sure. Okay, Pleasant and Stoke, uh, a lot of the same. The, the curb relocation is due to pedestrian amenities that we're trying to uh, improve. So we're replacing the existing traffic signals. We're adding crosswalks. Uh, there's a singular apex ramp at the northerly corner of Pleasant and Stoughton that is going to be perpendicular ramps requiring, requiring the widening. Um, and then there's widening of sidewalk on the southerly side as well to install compliant curb ramp and widening of the sidewalk at Pleasant Street and Whitby Terrace to add crosswalk that's currently not there. Um, the crosswalk would be too skewed without pushing the sidewalk out, so just all in the benefit of improving pedestrian amenities. side of each uh, handicap uh, uh, ramp. No, no. Walk, walk down the street on the uh, north, north side. Okay. Right, see the bump, the bump out. You see on the, the hand, on the edge of the handicap ramp, the, uh, this, what's, what's that? Is that a sign? Those are signs right there. They are signs. Yeah, they're, signs. they're reflective. So so they're yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Right. Yeah, so there'd be traffic signal equipment flanking those handicap ramps. Right. There needs to be push buttons within reach of those ramps. Right. Yeah. And it's all to MassDOT standard for the uh, reflective signs that okay. are current. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any questions on Pleasant and Stoke? I, I asked at New Business if this in any way, shape, or form affects the school buses. I know there's a drop off area. No. Okay. Great. The Edward Everett School. 
Cummins and Rockdale, uh, we're replacing the existing traffic signals. We're replacing the apex ramp at the southwesterly corner. Perpendicular, to, perpendicular ramps are uh, causing us to remove the existing traffic median island. That's coming out in um, pretty straightforward intersection signal improvement here at this location. And the last intersection on the agenda is in East Boston. This is Bennington at London and Marion. Uh, right now, it is unsignalized and it's an expansive pavement. We're adding additional uh, sidewalk and curbing to uh, help uh, channel the traffic into specific patterns, creating nice uh, pedestrian crossings that are shorter and safer. Um, let's see. So adding the signals, we're reconfiguring the intersection. Uh, apex ramps with uh, we're replacing all of the apex ramps with perpendicular ramps and this requires relocating street lights and we're coordinating that accordingly with the city. Is London Street a two-way street? London. Is London where the predominance of the bump outs and, and London's yeah. London's one way lead. One way, way, coming one way, way towards the towards the tolls. Yes. 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 Right. Away gotcha. from the intersection. Yeah. Those are the four intersections. Uh, so obviously, Mr. Shea would love to be invited to the, the pre-con. Uh, any members of the audience have any questions or comments at this time? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by the City of Boston Transportation Department to make the specific repairs on Washington Street, in Boston proper, Pleasant Street, and Dorchester, Cummins Highway, and Dorchester, and Bennington Street, East Boston, it's described and read into the record by the chair and shown a set of plans to title City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, specific repair plans for Waltham Street, Pleasant Street, Cummins Highway, and Bennington Street. Four sheets are dated July 22nd, 2016. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank, Thank you. Very much, Mr. Chairman Thank and you. commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. First item of new business. Life Street, Brighton, layout approval on a petition by Boston Landing, LLC. Morning. Good morning. On behalf of Boston Landing, LLC, I'm Pat Conley with Beals Associates. I'm joined with uh, Marty Healy from Google Proctor. Uh, just to orient you real quick, this is New Balance Development. You have New Balance's headquarters. Uh, the new uh, residential buildings, sports complex, Celtics facility, and the Bruins facility. Uh, in terms of roadways, you have Guest Street, which is a public way. You have Life Street, which is a public way. And we're here for the private roadway layout of the extension of Life Street in between Guest Street and private road uh, service driveway. Uh, so this just shows the uh, outline of the right-of-way and outline of the streets. And this is the design we're proposing. It'll be 12 foot wide travel lanes, eight foot wide uh, parking pockets on each side. Uh, the west side will have a concrete sidewalk and street trees like the surrounding streets. Uh, the west side is just gonna be a, a two minute sidewalk for now until this uh, building is designed and constructed. Uh, Drainage-wise, it drains an underground infiltration uh, towards the north, towards the service road. And utilities are part of a temporary installation now, and permanent utilities will be installed also with the construction of that. My apologies for what I'm going to ask. Just for my orientation purposes, yes. the proximity of the new T station, isn't there a new T station coming somewhere? Yeah, How far is it from this street? Like, no, no, uh, you have a locus wonderful through there. So this is the street, right? Two stations down here to the west. Okay, so this private way ends up on a service road. Is that service road connected to the future T station? No. No, uh, the service drive comes down and service. connects the uh, right. So, the so if I walk down Life Street, private way, onto the service road, I cannot get to the T station? 
in the future? Yes. I think I believe so. You're not 100 percent certain. My my question goes along like this. Right now, this is a private stream. Amy, is it ever going to come to us for public? And we know that by how? By the way that we write the order. Thank you. Uh, also, since are you okay with 69 feet? You know me and my round numbers issue. Yes, I am. Right. So, are the buildings set set in concrete where they cannot adjust this to 17? Not, not that it matters. It's not never going to come to us. Correct. It's a whole number. So I mean, it's not 69.3 right. feet. So now, I mean, yeah. Otherwise, okay. you're going to. All right. So the one foot they can and we have 70 foot right away. Right. But it is never to come as a public street, and so you will still light it in case if there are pedestrians that go down this street. Amy, it, it will be lit to city standards. Yep. Yes, it, it still has to meet our lighting standards, lighting our standards, accessibility standards. standards yep. All of yep. And that service road is not going to connect to the T station? Uh, well, the farthest it can go is another private way, Arthur ah. Street. There's a, a stop and shop is in between us and the, and the station. On there. the back side? Yeah, on the back side and the front, yeah. Just, it's shown on the plan right there in the far side. So it's, that's a little So physically impossible for someone to go and use the back side of this to get to the overpass over I-90? It could be improved, I suppose, but it's got, but right, you have yeah, a stop and, and shop land. Basically, the, the most thing you'll ever get out of this is a U right back to Guest Street. I know in the original LMI, um, the project was going to maintain the public rights of way for snow plowing and ice control and stuff. We've since taken that back, but this being a private way, this piece of, of that whole area will, will be maintained by thoroughly by, yeah, yes. Boston Atlantic, including snow, yeah. Yeah, we, we can't get into it. Um, okay, will two weeks be enough time? All right, we will see you on September 15th for a public hearing. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Second item of new business, 52 Melrose Street, Boston proper. Specific repairs on a petition by Select 52 Melrose Street, LLC. Good morning. morning. My name is Mark Donahoe. I'm the owner of Select 52, Mel Select 52 Melrose Street, LLC, which is also the address of the property. We're seeking specific repair, to do specific repairs in order to uh, install in this, underneath the sidewalk a forced injection well that captures the rainwater, the stormwater, and puts it back into the ground. These plans were developed after my engineer and I interacted with the Boston Water and Sewer and Amy Cording from this office. Um, we got that direction and that's where these plans, uh, that's how these plans were developed. We, we have letters in the application from all the agencies that we've interacted with. One thing that's not in there was the formal approval from the Landmarks Commission. They gave me an email, but they since then issued a letter. I don't know if you've gotten that. Would you like a copy? I'd love a copy, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. And the only comment that the Landmarks Commission had was they would like to see, this is a brick sidewalk, and they just don't want to see concrete surrounding the manhole. I'll post an observation well to this, to this. I'm sorry? Any idea where an observation well is located uh, close to this facility? I do not. I apologize. I do not know. You, um, Gary, we have a whole you know, list of the observation wells that are kept by the uh, Groundwater Trust. Yeah, we, we, were, we were rejecting here. It would be nice to have a well pretty close to it. It probably out around this area. Okay. Sounds like you have approval from the uh, regulatory agencies, which is good. Uh, will two weeks be enough time? Certainly. Okay. We'll see you two weeks from today for a public hearing. Thank, Thank you. you, Mark. Third item of new business, various North End streets, Boston proper, grants of location on a set of petitions by Extinet Systems Incorporated. Mr. Chairman, Morning. Commissioners, um, 
For the record, Ricardo Souza from Prince Bell Tie here on behalf of the petitioner, Extinet Systems, also John Morrison from UC Synergetics, and Paul Thurston. Um, and Mr. Chairman, we had filed a petition um, for essentially 27 new nodes, two of which were in the north end and 25 of which are in the south end. Um, we will pursue into our, my discussion with uh, both Todd and Amy. We're going to break those out into two separate petitions, one for the north end, two nodes, and a separate petition for the 25 south end nodes. And I think that's why it's broken out the way it okay. is in the new business. With respect to the two uh, north end nodes, um, these nodes were part of our original petition back in, in May. We had pulled them off uh, because of handicap access. And so we went back to the drawing board. We were able to rework one of them so that it would comply with the base design um, that this commission has approved. But there is one particular node that uh, we have not been able to. It's node um, 31 on the petition where we are requesting, rather than utilizing the base design, we are requesting that we install our cabinets as a pole mount on the replacement street light. And the reason is, um, if I could, the reason is there are, uh, there's a fence, an existing fence that's much too close to the actual street light itself. It's, it's on Hanover Street, right? No, uh, no it's, it's on Garden Court Street. Yeah, it's, it's off of the main street. It's not on Hanover. So it's um, into the neighborhood. And I do have a photo of it, if, if I could. Um, there you go. This shows uh, sort of the proximity of the fence that we can't move. Uh, and, you know, there are a fair number of nodes. We've, we have received 17 approvals, and this is the only one which is not utilizing the base design in the north end. So I, I, I have the picture here. Where, where would it, where would it, where would you affix the node? So we would essentially replace that existing street light, mm -hmm. and rather than put utilize the base um, for our cabinets, we will pull mount the cabinets above, essentially above that parking sign. So the cabinet would be there. How large is the cabinet? The radio cabinet. Oh, no, how large? The oh, other photo large. that you have is a pretty good representation. The one that the commissioner had from before. Yeah. That's a pretty good representation of what these guys are talking about. Because, again, the property on this side, is it a parking lot? It's a school. What's oh. any, any, any way of doing this on the ground? The cabinet? Yeah. N not that, yeah, not that I'm aware of, Mr. Moshe. You know, there have been in other instances, there are other existing nodes in the city that utilize the pole mounted design. You know, um, we try to avoid it given the direction that this commission has given us. You know, for example, there are 25 that we're proposing in the south end, all of which are utilizing the base design. And so it's only rare circumstances where we come here asking for a, a waiver of that design to be able to pole mount uh, the cabinets. Why does it have to be this pole? Um, so it's a matter of propagation. It's a matter of finding adequate coverage throughout the north end that comports with the other nodes that we've already been that have already been approved. So could two different poles do the duty of this one pole if need be? Not that we're aware of. Um, yeah, Paul, we, I'm not we, sure if you worked with yeah, the radio frequency team. We researched team. the whole area. There was it had to be this pole. We would have simply have moved it um, if we could, but there was nothing uh, suitable in that area. Uh, and these were approved by the originally by the neighborhood group as well as location. Yes, can you uh, speak a little bit towards the neighborhood's participation with someone agreeing this is okay to be here? Sure. Like, who from the north end neighborhood? So we met with both neighborhood associations in, in the north end regarding these polls back in really January and February. But this specific poll with a specific poll with the cabinet mounted, that thought that was that discussed with the neighborhood. We did not go back to them with that specific design for this specific no, wall. I, I, I'm sorry, if I'm, so the original design uh, did have all the equipment mounted on the pole for which we're requesting. They did approve that back in the January, February, and March time frame. It was only after our first hearing with you, the commissioners had asked us if we could actually take the equipment off the pole and then start putting it into the base cabinet design. Um, so this one was approved with the, by 
by the neighborhood groups with the shroud on it. Could you just double back with Maria Lanza from uh, yeah, we'll Neighborhood Services and, and just and, and seek her reapproval for this one? We can do I'd that. I'd appreciate it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And just, as Paul suggested, that was the progression of the design. The original pr pr presentation was that all of them were actually pole mounted. And then after coming to the first hearing here, we changed the designs to the ones that we could to base cabinets. And that's when we pulled out four of them that we could not accommodate and that we had to redesign. And this is one that we simply cannot do it. So. We will go back to the neighborhood yeah. group and speak to them. And, and I'll touch and base with her in the next two weeks as well. Of yeah. course. Yeah, we can do that. But as a business model, the way you are, it would be awkward for you to put all your eggs in one basket because the city still reserves the right for this port to be relocated, at which point you will not have access to this spot. Right. So as a business model, you need to have plan B with something else. So it is awkward for us to hear that you don't have a plan B. Let, let's, let's go down the avenue and try to do it right the first time. You know, why can't, is, the, is there no underground installations for, the, for this type of equipment? I mean, is it, is it a cost factor? What is it? Um, we put transformers on the ground. Yeah. You know, we, vent, we ventilate steam lines. The Swiss put them in manholes. Yeah, I have not seen it, Commissioner Moshe. You no, know, we, is, is, it a, is it a cost issue? What, what, what's the issue? Why can't we do on the ground? It, it just hasn't been developed yet. I mean, there is, similar to yourself, people have proposed that. There's just um, obviously um, a lot of the technical reasons to try to mount this equipment on the ground. They haven't found the answers. They, they would fill up with water. Or they, you know, um, other, you need pumps, you need ventilation, you need cooling. Um, and there's been no one. Um, it's done an aftermarket design to get what we, we would call uh, a communication bunker, um, for lack of a better term. But there's nothing out in the uh, market to uh, fulfill all the requirements of the heating, the cooling, and the uh, fresh air and everything else that would be necessary pumping of water. The previous poles that were replaced in the north end, right, the ones that you came to us with yeah. early in the spring? Those have all been constructed and installed, and no? We, we haven't been able to get any uh, permits um, to actually um, stop the digs and, and do that work. And all right. I was just curious what the feasts may or may not have done to the equipment. And I, I know they, they draw a lot of power off, off the streetlight poles. Um, yeah. But that's something that's been considered when developing this model in this neighborhood. OK. Yes. All right, so, so why don't we do this? <coughs> You have the dimensional requirements for, 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 this, for this equipment. For these cabinets, yeah. Let's put a piece of plywood up there, paint it black, and let ask the neighbors if they like it or not. See if, see if you'll get the sign off from the Neighborhood Association at that point. Do essentially a mock okay. presentation. We can do that. Okay. We have an empty cabinet. Would, I mean, would you like to just hang yeah, an empty yeah, cabinet? Yeah. yeah, we can do that. We've done it in, in other locations. Yeah. Thank sure. you. Yeah. Great. And so, uh, Mr. Chairman, that was the, That's, uh, the first uh, one. Item number three. Yes. Um, two weeks will be enough time. Reach out to ONS, put up our mark, and we'll have some of our favorite North Enders walk by and see what they think. What do you think? Yeah, not okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Next week? Okay. Yeah, so we'll see you on September 15th for a public hearing. Great. New business Thanks. item number four various South End streets, Boston proper, grants of location on a set of petitions by Extinet Systems. Mr. Chairman, um, Commissioners, this is a continuing effort to expand our wireless DAS network, but in the South End. And we did propose these 25 replacement street lights um, in the South End Landmarks District Commission. We also received a, a certificate of appropriateness from the South End Landmarks District Commission as well for these 25 nodes. And um, they are, once again, all replacement street lights. Um, the trenching itself, a uh, fair amount of it is micro trenching. Um, 22,292 feet is my actual micro trenching. And you that number, right? Of course, 2,292 feet is micro trenching. And so, more than, almost double is micro trenching for this particular expansion. And you've exhausted all uh, manholes to make sure we're tying into the closest one. I see the, a, a 429 and a 469. And the, the longer digs, there's nothing yes. closer. Uh, Paul and John can talk to that, but they do, as a team, look at 
trying to shorten uh, the digs mm -hmm. as much as possible. Yeah, the long digs in the south end here are um, basically because Verizon didn't have any systems except running up Columbus Ave. And so those are actually just going off of Columbus Ave and up um, to, to the nodes in, that are in that sort of park area. Yep. So those were the closest manholes that Verizon had for us to connect into. These cool by uh, our office? Yes, everything that we've done thus secure. far has been approved by Boston Water and Sewer. John, if for some reason the city decides to protect any type of infrastructure, maybe it's a holiday lights or a picture of me on one of these posts, <laughs> purposely, or about this. Uh, what rights do we have, or having? Do we does the city have rights to attach city needed elements, whatever yes. they may be, on this pole well, without uh, permission from God and country? Replacement halls are owned by us, maintained by them. Thank you. Yeah. Well. We just can't put an antenna. Christmas lights, A-OK, -okay. antenna. Can I put a secondary antenna on this code? Well, uh, we are working on, uh, uh, we have uh, some authority trying to pay back. Can I put a closer TV camera for transportation department's purposes? Yes, that's what we are there are interference concerns, that's the only thing that we would be concerned about. I'm sorry. As long as you're not interfering with the signal propagation, which you would not be on well, the camera. I don't know what type of radio, what type of detection systems we may be deploying in the years to come. We don't want to give up the rights which the city needs to have. Of course. To accommodate your industry, it needs mm -hmm. to be the other way around. So right now, the transportation department is looking at very key and innovative ways to do detection systems. And right. we, we want to reserve the rights for that front. Understood, Commissioner. Okay. Two weeks be enough time? Yes. That's Great. Fair. We'll also see you on September 15th for a public hearing. Very good. Thank, thank you very much. much. And thank you for the good packet day. as well. Thanks yeah, for the work on the packet. My pleasure. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye.